since 2016. Wow. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. Quite a long way now that I think of it. It's... Wow. Really? A lot. Really... But then the thing is, you will start a start high. So it's good to start, but however, you really need to get ready for, to, to brace for like, say, ups and downs because mm, yeah. not all things will go your way. Sometimes, you will post something, it causes controversy, people will start shouting at you in the comment section and then just say, oh, this guy is stupid. He's so mind F. I wouldn't want to swear on, mm. swear on stream, but yeah, so, but then you go through all the experiences actually makes you stronger, mentally stronger. Yeah. And so, you know, like say, oh, this guy is the same person. Ah, don't care. Just go ahead. Next one. Mm. So how do you deal with criticism from, you know, your peers or, you know, just your classmates telling you that, ah, this thing, no future, ah, no hope, man. Don't do, don't do. They never say anything. So never. I don't, wow. cannot, cannot say it. Never. Wow. Because some okay, of them, you have good because friends. So starting main page is like, because it's a very, back then uh, at least, it was a very unique thing. Because I could have done, I could have done either a meme page or a news page. But a news page is a bit, a bit boring because you really have all those bigger news outlets such as Fox Sports, ESPN, yeah, Sky, yeah, BBC. They're already handling all the news page. So that is just going to dilute the market even more. So I thought, let's start something a meme page, something a bit more unique, something more new. Mm. And then just give a bit of fun and banter to the fans out there because you know f1 normally during the race in f1 you don't really find it fun but a bit more Second. tense and nervous because yeah. every race is unpredictable you don't know what's going to happen in the next 50 odd level notice this was 2018 uh lando norris oh he actually yeah lando oh, he commented wow. on my post because wow he was it the context is that he was in back then he was in formula 2 mm. and he was doing his track walk in uh sochi russia on a bike lah Mm. on a bicycle and then so he was riding a bicycle as if it's like a motor gp like you bend all the way down for that like very weird and for that very extreme anger yeah yeah and then it's just i just put a quick photo of valentina rossi down there uh -huh. said spot the difference then a couple hours later lando came in and was like what difference okay, so what's your reaction honestly and when, well, when did that happen one, i was I don't know, I'll just I'll just uh, just only posting random stuff and then people comments like, hey, Gordon Ramsay follows you. I was like, really? Then I just checked, I was like, I was I wasn't shocked or happy, I was just a bit surprised. I was like questioning, why does Gordon Ramsay follow the random meme page? <laughs> I, I was really surprised. I was like, I don't know what's going on. I was like, why are you following me? I'm just only a random person that not even Sebastian Fetter knows. <laughs> I mean Oh, I think that's where you know you made it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of think that was how I actually really made it. But <laughs> yeah, till this day, I'm still questioning how he he just randomly followed. And then I was just looking through all his uh, followings, right? Mm. I was like, I think the one of the only only few meme pages that he follows. Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to the Wavers Podcast once again. So today it will be episode 9, I think. Yeah. So today we'll be joining with the guy, the man behind the Instagram account, GP and me. Hey guys, hi. So, shall I just quickly intro myself instead? First? Uh, up to you, man. Up to you. I don't know. Yeah, so. Hi guys, my name is Rio. So I'm the admin of this Instagram, Instagram account called GP and Memes, which is... Uh, basically, as the name suggests, it really fo solely focuses on memes that is done on Formula One, Grand Prix, and pretty much everything racing related. On the spot. Yeah. Yep. Honestly, re when the first time I found out about your your Instagram account, I actually was very surprised how you got so much followers or so much followings. You know, uh, considering it it's a Southeast Asia account also. Yeah. Or Southeast Asia admin. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know that Southeast Asia is not really a big market for Formula 1. So, for me, I really had to um, push my audience target towards Europe, which is where the bulk of the fan base is. So, mm. what I normally do, right, is I will post at a time where it is convenient for both Southeast Asia and Europe, which is 8 p.m. Singapore time. So, it would be uh, 1 p.m. Europe time. Oh. Which is I uh, say everyone is that everyone having their lunch break, so most likely they're going to Instagram or social media, and they probably come across my post also. Yeah, there's some kind of 
strategic things yeah, you need to work out. That's quite smart. Eh? Yeah. yeah, indeed. So, oh, no wonder I don't really see you so active during the day, like, in our time zone. Uh. Yeah. The only exception would be, say, let's say you have your Asian races, such as Singapore, Australia, Japan, where the sessions happen, like, in our, our so-called afternoons. Uh. So, yeah, that's in where middle, the... Middle time zone, basically. Yeah, that's where the only exceptions come, come in. Hmm. I see, I see. Hmm. Alright, so guys, uh, we are, we also... We are also joined with Isaac. I I, I would say also the co-host of the Waivers podcast. I would say, uh, promote promoter recently. I don't know. We picked him up from the trash bin. Yep. Right. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 So from the streets. From the streets. From the streets. From the from the circuit. All right. Yep. Actually, you know what? Let's just get started with the interview. So, mm. the first question that I have is, you know, uh, what were the main challenges you faced when you started this meme page? Mm, of course. And like I said, um, Southeast Asia, the uh, market is very small when it comes to Formula 1. And the thing is, I started this account back in 2016. Mm, and mm. back then, the only places in Southeast Asia where F1 was is Singapore and KL. Yeah, Malaysia, and, Sepang. Yeah, so it's only a few, it's only a very, very niche group. Lah. So, I, and most of the other accounts I've seen back then, they were, I was seeing, I think I saw one from UK, then there was Germany, and not too much, uh, because back then, the so-called, I call it the meme industry, the meme account industry, uh, was not very big. So then, I felt like, eh, this one was quite fun, uh, let's just try it out as a hobby a bit, and then, yeah, I kind of just took off from there. I started from becoming a hobby to a uh, side hustle. Mm. You mm. got paid for... Yeah, exactly, this one I wanted to ask. Uh, this one... Instagram, no, I don't get paid actually. Oh, okay. uh, it's just like my own thing. But sometimes I do have so called other outlets that have reached out to me to help with their promotional stuff, such as this uh, news outlet called ASM Motorsports, which is called short for what? All Sports Network, I think. Oh. Yep. And because uh, one of the main things that they discuss with me is to promote their end of season awards, oh. end of season F1 awards. So they say, like, Awards such as Driver of the Year, Young Driver of the Year, etc. Et oh, ASN, uh, the one... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> that one. Yeah, that I just one. got IT find it at that one. <laughs> you know? I saw, I saw he, they posted about the jury vips one. Eh, uh, yeah. They did. Right, I'm not gonna pretend that I know what's, what you guys talking about, but I actually don't. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, it's, it, but it's fine so, alright so hmm. uh, Isaac actually told me that you do like uh, you com- you, you're commentators for you know racing events sim racing events so mm-hmm. right was that true is that true yeah that is true in fact I so far this year I did two commentary events wow. for our Legion of Racers uh, track day track day track day so called activities or racers so basically, I just said my friend, his name is Javier, but unfortunately, uh, he's currently serving his NSO, like, Ooh, as much as I want him yes. to come to this podcast, couldn't not, yeah, so, yeah, so basically, I sit down, we just look at the screen, and then just talk about what's going on on track, and then, also, in between, we just say some kind of random stuff, like, that is not even related to the things, <laughs> just to, like, keep every, keep the high part, keep it funny a bit, and... It's just quite something new experiences and also it helps de- develop your so-called portfolio when it comes to all these kind of... Um, media. Yeah, all these media stuff and events. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. So what, what's your main... Ch- have you ever like uh, encountered yourself like you just lost what you want to say during uh, the event? For me, rarely lah because... Uh, I watch a lot of Formula 1, so uh. of course I also get to know a bit more about the commentary and then I also like have this vocab, vocabulary mm. that I know what, what to use. I try not to repeat words. For example, somebody goes off track, I don't always say, oh, he had an off-track excursion, off-track excursion. I can just say, oh, he had an off into the gravel. He just went off the track. You don't really repeat until it really gets repetitive and then eventually very boring. Mm. So... I'll, I I I will assume your main advice to those youngsters or those people who actually 
want to pursue their commentating career to m- watch more of what they are interested in and then only yep. uh do what they are they want to do la, right yes you really need to mm-hmm. gain experience or gain understanding first from the so-called experts ah and from there on you can take a leaf of take a page of the book out of their own book and then you want to adapt it to yourself or make changes to probably improve it, I would say. Mm. And yeah, so yeah, just get, just learn from the experts, actually. Learn from the experts, you go a long way, I would say. I see, I see. All right, moving on. Uh, this, this is going to be a kind of interesting question. So why, why a meme page, you know? Why start a meme page uh, mm, during 2016? Starting a meme page is like, because it's a very, back then uh, at least, it was a very unique thing. Because I could have done, I could have done either a meme page or a news page. But a news page is a bit, a bit boring because you really have all those bigger news outlets such as Fox Sports, ESPN, yeah, Sky, yeah, you can see they're already handling all the news page. So that is just going to dilute the market even more. So I thought, let's start something a meme page, something a bit more unique, something more new. And then just give a bit of fun and banter to the fans out there because, you know, F1, normally during the race in F1, you don't really find it fun, but a bit more Sorry. tense and nervous because yeah. every race is unpredictable. You don't know what's going to happen in the next 50 odd laps. So yeah, you want to have inject a bit of fun and laughter so that just to like uh, decrease the tensions out there. I see. I mean, well, I mean, at least you know that, you know, uh, <laughs> there are such heavily i mean at least you know that you you should not go into this uh news reporting industry but yeah. you know just go into an industry that is not well known during mm. that time because for yeah. myself i actually uh b- before i started uh, my side hustle currently uh video editing i actually tried uh admit uh admin thing or you know just managing a sports moderating uh. yeah moderating a sports uh highlight account yeah instagram account so yeah so it's actually called uh timeless sports highlight ball highlight yeah and yeah <laughs> if, if if you're gonna ask where is the account right now i deleted it because it failed tremendously so actually that's where uh where i started video editing because at times when you when you want to get your clips you also have to trim and edit right so that's mm-hmm. what i did lah so how i got my inspiration uh, back then was i don't know whether you know this guy omar raja do you know this guy never heard of him ever okay have you heard of the house of highlights the basketball Neither have heard of that. oh wow okay that's that's surprising <laughs> i okay. think we're just two very different industries <laughs> yeah yeah definitely one in basketball one, in... <laughs> one i don't watch, i don't watch basketball how do i know <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, nothing bad lah. I mean, we are not we're not putting a fault with anyone. Just, yeah, just asking. <laughs> so basically, there's this very inspirational uh entrepreneur, I guess. Uh, his name is Omar Raja, and he actually started this uh sports uh Instagram account. Basically, he posts highlights and things like that. Uh, during his college years, so it was basically an assignment that his uh. What, what do they call teachers in college again? Lecturers? Lecturers. Ah, uh, yeah. So basically, his lecturer, if I'm not mistaken, assigned him a, a, a assignment regarding this. And he basically slowly uh, grew, grew the account. And he, he actually sold that account. So the account is House of Highlights. So he sold the account uh, for 175 million to ESPN. What? Wow. Wait. Wow. Yeah. 175 mil? Yes. Um, he sold his he sold the idea i think yeah that oh, idea crazy that, that is crazy amounts crazy so how he started so did, right oh did the lecturer on. asked any money from him <laughs> definitely not <laughs> i do not think so i think it was just a percent commission yeah yeah no nah, i don't think so <laughs> uh, i'll think I, i'll assume that it was just an assignment to just prove that he he has done the assignment and the account is just his uh, i'll assume that's how he went went up uh, went up so how he started was uh Omar Raja. Omar was a very he was a fan of the Miami Heats. Uh uh yeah. So 
when he started this account, it was during 2014, just two years uh, apart from yours. So he, he started this account in 2014, and that's where LeBron James left Miami Heat. So he, Ooh, yeah, yeah, and he was a diehard fan of Miami Heat. So <laughs> yeah, obviously, if you're a diehard fan, you will actually, you know, uh, do anything to just remember your your favorite uh the main athlete in your team right so that's what he did he got he compiled clips from many sources from the nba uh website and he actually posted it in his account to you know uh remember lebron during his mm-hmm. times in miami so yeah that's where it all started and it's kind of inspir- in, in inspirational and where where I got to know this guy was just scrolling through TikTok the other day, like when I was handling my account time timeless ball highlight. So once I came across Omar, I just you know what I think I should just you know, uh, I should just give it a shot. So I came out I came out with timeless ball highlight and yeah, it didn't it didn't work out. Didn't, yeah, it didn't work. That out. went well. <laughs> that went well. Yeah. That's why that's 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 the next question. That's uh what I want to ask. Uh, for the next question, how do you gain motivation, or you know, how do you keep continuing what you do daily to maintain this account? Well, actually, my yeah. piece, my motivation for this is actually quite interesting. It's from is when I'm able to actually connect with Singaporeans that also love Formula One or at least motorsports, mm-hmm. because this for me really opens up a new channel, opens up new channels of friendship, and. Actually, through this account, I did manage to make couple, uh, quite a number of new friends, actually. Oh. Mm. Yeah, so the first time was actually 2018, because... And this story is quite interesting, because I went, to the, I went down to Singapore Rock Rumpy itself, lah, and was down there just enjoying the... Just talking in the atmosphere, until one of my friends now, he actually just slid into my DM and said, Hey, you had the Singapore Grand Prix? And I was like, uh, yeah. And he was like, hey, me also, and then... Yeah, it kind of just took off from there, actually. So, yeah, really being able to start networking and then making new friends, getting know more people is quite interesting JVR. and enriching. I see. Well, is it JVR? Uh, I don't know. No, JVR was a bit later on. But in in fact, just thing on this topic, right, there's also through this account where I actually also got to know the one and only Mika Hakimi. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mika Kimi. Mm. Yeah, legend. See. Yeah, legend, legend. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. And then I got to know you too, Isaac. Yeah, no, actually it was technically through Mika because it was me, you, and Kai, right? Kai came in a bit later. Mika was the main one. I don't know how I got to know you, actually. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Yeah, actually, that's, one of, mm. that's part of the question that I have. How did you meet Isaac, actually? Do you remember <laughs> how you you like you know bump into him or something? It was I I mean it was definitely started with Mika. Oh, oh okay, I remember now because Kings uh, and Queens, uh what Mika did I was bring me into the Kings and Queens uh Discord. Yeah. That's how it, yeah. Then I was I was there. It was me, him, and uh Kaishong, right? And yeah. Then we were just all talking, talking, and then slowly okay, and then we joined, and then he would be there. He would be like then last time before he. He had a girlfriend up. Then he would join. Then we would all join him. And we'll just mm-hmm. talk, talk, talk. And then just jawa at the end. Yeah. <laughs> so I, every, I'm every assuming single... it's just a private server that you guys have to hang around. I guess you could say that. I would say it's a uh, sim racing server, I guess. Private server. You can say so. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> so, okay. Back to the previous question. So you mentioned that the main motivation for 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 you to maintain this account is getting to know more people right through your yeah. industry so getting to know uh people is one but how do you keep posting consistently is it the same moti- motivational factor or same because you see each race right mm. there is some cause something something that happens that probably say it has never never happened before and so this is like where the it's fresh content comes in win. Yeah, there we go. Something like this. So, yeah. Yeah. As a 2024. But anyways, back to, back to the question. Um, yeah, it's really getting, always you having new content coming in. And for say, let's say there's a, 
and in the event that say there's a four week break or many months break from Formula One, what I normally do is to actually substitute my memes for say videos where I do like hot laps of say a certain car at a certain circuit. Oh. Just to like fill the void. I see. Or if not, um, sometimes I just do a bit of uh skits lah because recently I got a new helmet and then I can do a bit of mini skit. What I happens mean, if you stop the brake and gas pedal at the same time? Um, you take a screenshot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's good that you know how to keep your account alive during your yeah. main source of uh main source of I would say uh content of peak. Yeah. Yeah. I I would say it's 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 really smart actually. You know, mm. trying making your own content or your main source of content is currently ideal. I I do my, yeah. my bad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh back uh not back. But uh my next question will be uh Isaac, do you have any questions? Nothing right. Uh as of right now, what's your main goal? Mm. For me, I don't have any uh follower target. I just want to like uh just go on to continue the account, make people laugh, have just have fun and of course continue the networking. That is I think that's one of the more crucial things for me because uh yeah, uh want to know more people, build up a click, I would say. In fact I already have like one one big click of us from one one fans in one WhatsApp group chapter already and and I'm quite glad that we actually uh, manage to meet up some sometimes in real life, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. See. But I mean, confirming goal show at least fifty k, right? What? Fifty k followers. Uh yeah, that that be quite um. I would say achievable, achievable, but a bit ambitious, lah. But we'll see. I mean, because the thing about this is that your followers actually fluctuate. I also yeah. do not understand why, whether it's because of the algorithm or the things I post, but yeah, like it's it, it'd be a while if I get there because the thing is, I started with zero back in 2016. Now, 2022, six years later, I'm already at what, 34.5k? So mm-hmm. you can see it's a very slow and tedious process. And I mean... to hit 50k, it's, it'd be quite a bit more time before I do mm-hmm. that unless I have a How sudden much... boom lah. How much do you have when you, I met you? 28, was it? The 8, 28, 29-ish? Yeah. yeah. So in, I mean, last year was a bit of an anomaly. Like, there's, last year, there was quite a spike on some days. So, because I think it's like... I don't know what I post. Like, I can't remember. But okay. It's just random stuff. How do you fight through days where you just don't feel like posting, you know? Because... It- handling our account like this right you need to mm. be consistent with your content to actually stay relevant to this yeah. uh, industry you know and it's a very hard mm. industry to actually yeah, be up there mm. Mm, for me I think if I like say I don't have the drive right I just take a chill pill uh, just don't do anything or I just what mm, take something from my old stuff I did, I did this a few times I take I just scroll all the way down, take something <laughs> random from my old post, and then I just nobody repost. Like, no, eh. nobody, nobody will notice. Hey, 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 everyone, <laughs> not, <laughs> not everyone will know. <laughs> not everyone knows. <laughs> hey, I, I said you don't. <laughs> but yeah, Probably actually, just... that's good. That's smart. Mm. Or oh, the thing is, sometimes I recently did actually did a meme on myself, lah. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah, Ferrari. I saw. I saw. There yeah. I go, bro. Sometimes that meme has to be meme. Is that the first time you actually face review to your... Uh, no, the first time face review was actually 2018 mm. at the Singapore Grand Prix itself because uh, I met one of our local drivers, Pingo Chong, and I thought, ah, just face review, take a selfie. What, what, I mean, what harm can I do for myself? So, how, how, what, what was the reaction from your fan base? That time, because it was like, I posted like, uh, it was like early post, like, like 5 p.m. ish. There wasn't much response, lah. But one of my friends, she commented, was like, "Wow, real finally show face, ah." I see. So, so the fan actually yeah. re- knows you personally in real life. Yeah, she's uh, my classmate. Oh, back in secondary school. I see. Yeah. Also, oh, you're not in what? secondary Sorry, school. Who? Classmate, classmate. Oh, 
awkward silence. What? I said, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What did they say? What did they say? I was like, no, who, who, who is your classmate? Why, why you want to know? Ah, this is this, this guy, this guy. <laughs> I, 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 oh, he's school also like that one. This one. I only said she, then you were excited already, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, ongoing. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, how do you manage your your life, right? Your actual like, how to say? It sounds very rude, you know. How to say? Yeah, lah, But I get, I get what I mean. Yeah. I mean, it, this account actually doesn't really take up much of my life, really, because ah. uh, it's only a small thing. And to think of content, I don't know, maximum 10 to 15 minutes. And then just to make it, because I just always have the <coughs> apps on my phone stay on standby to make meme generator, um, Apple Pages, oh. Adobe Photoshop, all just all quickly can be done quite quickly. Uh. I see. So yeah. you, you, you normally have these templates where you can just... Uh, throw in yeah uh, okay, but the template's ready uh. Uh. and then when it comes to say virtual lab times I use my free time on the weekends to record the labs on the Settle Corsa mm. I see I see yeah so you know when when did you realize your meme page became a very big deal like it started it... becoming famous I don't know I think it was it just it just gradually came in because there wasn't like a point where it really struck me that I think I should really continue this. It's just it's just slowly it's just because the follow just gradually going up, right? It's not like it should always shot up and then they say, Okay, let's focus on this one. It just slowly came to me, yeah, because I enjoy doing the doing this kind of process, although it may sound very re- repetitive and tedious to do it every day, but there's something like I wouldn't say you can gain from it, but it's just basically you really enjoy what you do. Lah. And then, of course, and then sometimes there's good things that uh, when a driver actually notices what you're doing. Yeah, so um, one of the dri- one of the first times where a driver noticed was 2018, uh, Lando Norris. Oh, he actually... Yeah, Lando. Oh, he commented wow. on my post because wow. he was in... The context is that he was in... Back then, he was in Formula 2. And he was doing his track walk in uh, Sochi, Russia, on a bike, lah, mm. on a bicycle. And then so he was riding a bicycle as if it was like a MotoGP, like you bend all the way down for that, that very weird, ang- for that very extreme angle. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just, I just put a quick photo of Valentino Rossi down there, uh-huh. said, spot the difference. Then, a couple of hours later, Lando came in and was like, what difference? Whoa. And wow. I was like, wait. So, what was your reaction when you found out that Lando actually commented on your post? I was like, oh my word, Lando commented on my post. <laughs> Did you actually yeah, I was like, like, jump like, around? Back, <laughs> Not really, la. I was just like, I was like, oh my god. Wow. I mean, yeah. that would be such an accomplishment, you know, considering mm-hmm. how much you have put in to the, ch- the, the meme page, considering yeah. you started since 2016 till now. Yes. Hmm. Quite a long which, way indeed. Which Lando meme, the one, the one where he's laying on the ground, or not? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's twenty eighteen, man. You want to scroll back four years to find it? I don't know. <laughs> I see. I mean, I think I might have saved it like, later. I can share it with you. And speak, speak, stay on this topic of drivers noticing me. There was another driver which noticed my account, one of my posts. Oh. And it's Alistair Young. Alistair. What's that one? Which one? Um. It, Who? Uh, it was um Alexis son. Oh, 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 oh that guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. oh yeah. And then it was basically a meme basically a meme la, where I had these uh three cars going down the camo street at Spa from Gosham. Mm. And then in the middle is Alexis' car. I don't know how he was like fighting for the podium, but uh yeah, and then I think Alexis saw that and was like he say the car in the middle is the best. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> when two other cars were like much faster than Alexis car. Uh, oh. uh, I'm not. I'm not surprised anyway. So, <laughs> is he actually that good? Honestly. Oh, Alex or Alistair? I mean, okay, the the young family. Okay, I'll just say that the young family. Uh, in your opinion, I think the parents was quite rich, one, right? Yeah. Alex, mm, I've said no. Alex's mm. parents. I you are not mistaken. Their parents own tracks, but was it? I got no idea. I, I, I don't know. I don't care. I also don't know, but I just quite <laughs> Yeah, but yeah. Um, but I think Alistair better than Alex. 
Mm. Of course, uh, I just said that outlaw didn't I? I mean, okay, you you can't compare like that, la, Honestly, because yeah, la, it's not easy, lah. It's not easy. You have sim racing now, you know. Back then, Alex don't have any technology. Don't have. They don't have the simulator to help them yeah. to develop their skills yeah. or and prepare you, for the race weekend. And not yeah. that, ah, Alex's father is a racing driver, so like learning directly from him is like Max and your uh Verstappen, right? Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. But it's it's actually yeah it's cool cool it, how mm. Oh, okay good to know oh, well <laughs> so obviously uh we all know here that you are Gordon Ramsay I think everyone knows who's who's who who's he follows your page so <laughs> what's your reaction honestly and when well, when did that happen one, I was I don't know I was just I was just uh, just only posting random stuff and then people comments like hey Gordon Ramsay follows you I was like really. Then I just checked, I was like, I was, I wasn't shocked or happy, I was just a bit surprised. I was like questioning, why does Gordon Ramsay follow the random meme page? <laughs> I, mean, I was really surprised, I was like, I don't know what's going on, I was like, why are you following me? I'm just only a random person that not even Sebastian Vettel knows. I mean, I think that's where you know you made it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of think that was how I actually really made it. But <laughs> yeah, till this day, I'm still questioning how he he just put random fully follow. And then I was just looking through all his uh, followings, right? Mm. I was like, I think the one of the only only few meme pages that he follows. Yeah. Oh wow. And, uh, and but then the ironic thing, yeah, uh, he hasn't liked the single single post. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. That's you that's never know. At, at first, I thought he would like. Okay. Do you remember the one where you posted about Gordon? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be like, maybe he would like this one. <laughs> yeah, it didn't oh. happen. But but the the so he is a fan of F one, right? You see, he is a fan. He's a motorsports fan, apparently. Mm, so I thought it was only a... the amount of Ferraris he have. Yeah, that guy. Uh, yeah, Insane. of course he rich what? Yeah, I but... mean he's also apparently he just both into F one and football, which is also what I am right now. Oh, football. Yeah. What team yeah. you support? Manchester United. Hey, save! Let's go! Hey, hey! let's go! Hey! Yeah. Hey! The Red Devils. Hey! Hey! Yeah, actually, we can talk about it now. Eh, but still. Last mm. season, oh my god, last season was bad. Very last bad. season was, oh my word. <laughs> what was Randick doing? In yeah. fact, it's not Randick's issue. It's the it's the players. Yeah, well, you see, Randick well, now he's playing, playing with he's though. managing Austria and he's getting wins out like out of nowhere. Is it? I didn't. Yeah, follow, I didn't. Really Austria. He he was playing. Either. He's now managing Austria, and then his first game, he he already won three 0 Wow, I see. Yeah. So how do you Speaking think? Speaking of GP oh. and memes, right? <laughs> yeah. Look at this guy. There's one thing that I really hate about GP and memes. Oh. What? Ah, oh. Come, come, come. Oh. Ah. Every April, every April Fools, <laughs> <laughs> nigga, be, he goes, oh, F1 is coming back to Malaysia. And I'll be like, oh shit, nice. And I'll be like, wait. Oh, yeah, right. I, I remember this year, I remember this year. I actually fall for it too. Mm. No, yeah, I think- it's not. I think I think uh, it's actually a you issue. You fell for it, which means you are the one who fell for got, it yourself. It's not my problem, it's yours. Yeah. But you got everyone excited in the comments, you know. Yeah. But do you think Sepang will be back in the F1 calendar? Um it's not impossible. As much as I want to say I mean going to yeah. Yeah. It's not impossible, but it's very hard. As much as I want to say it wants to come back, uh the organizers at uh Sepang they say they don't want because they also lack the funds. Mm. So how do yeah. you think uh, they can raise the funds or actually make a comeback? For me, one of the ways is actually that uh, because what I have, the thing is a bit of a context, what FIA did in 2020 just to, because COVID is causing a lot of financial issues for everyone, right? Yeah. What FIA did, right, was like to decrease the so-called the uh, hosting fee uh, for F1. Mm-hmm. So that I think this is what they can do to Malaysia as well. Because I mean, it's a long shot, but if they understand the issues are going and then they know that there is a good, decent demand for F1 to return to uh, Sepang. No, a lot I don't people see why actually not. like Sepang, you know. It's mm. actually a very nice track. It's a very fun track, actually. Yeah. Just driving on the scene, it's really fun. Oh. Oh, the very iconic ice cream. Oh, yeah. And Felipe Baby, stay cool. Oh, oh Felipe Baby, stay cool. Stay cool, <laughs> we get you the white visor. Okay, so... Oh, that's actually my spam account. 
knowing that uh F one tickets or even going to any uh racing events, knowing that their tickets are so expensive, how how do you think? Is there any other ways that Sapang can make a comeback other than ticket sales uh price reduction? Other than making increasing ticket sales, um. One of the ways is actually to integrate support races mm-hmm. to into the F one into the F one weekend. So for example, you can have F one racing, and they also have what a uh, Vios Cup, for example. Vios Cup, uh, Vios Cup, Vios right. Cup, Vios Vios same lah. <laughs> Vios to just both sing to it. Anyways, and also, um, I don't know invite. Uh, that doesn't make sense at all. I was gonna say invite selects, but everyone's doing that already. <laughs> but yeah, I think mm-hmm. support races is one. I believe it's one of the things that really attracts people to come because you see uh, some tracks such as for example Bahrain or Silverstone they have Formula 2 support racers and then of course and then Formula 2 in fact the big fan base is getting bigger because people like they recognize the talents that these junior drivers have and then it really that's what really interests them to watch these junior support racers so yeah I think really support racers is one of the ways to go I see so- I think your best Bet of getting F1 back is if there's a Malaysian F1 driver. Because if you've got Malaysian F1 driver, like Lee Chong Wei and that, lah, mm. everyone wants to support their local, the quote unquote hero, ma, right? Of course, you're going to watch one. I mean, and probably that's one of the ways a country can actually consider subsidizing or considering, you know, bringing back uh, a part of a sport that hasn't been there for quite a while. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, there's actually this Formula 3 driver from Malaysia, Nazim Asman. Oh, so, who? Nazim Asman. He's a F3 driver in... Yeah, he's a Formula 3 driver. Racing for, I believe, high-tech GP. Oh, okay. Yeah, and... So far, he's actually a decent driver, actually. Quite a solid midfield runner. I see. Hmm. So, um... Other than that, uh... What's your... Okay, this is this is a bit off but i'm just gonna ask how, how's your experience so far in the vavis podcast and what's your first impression of us you know how, how did you get to find out about us um I mean, obviously I get to find out. yeah of course it's true isaac <laughs> everything is true isaac these days isn't it yeah oh isaac okay man <laughs> yeah you wanna so you wanna get into f1 team go through me you know uh, i can yeah. get you the ferrari contract no problem okay Okay, uh, I just yeah, give me the yeah, get, get, get me the suit as possible. I already got the suit, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The anyways, uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, I really quite like this uh, podcast. It's actually my first mm. podcast in about a year. Oh, so, so this yeah, is so the first time. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's my first podcast is wow. with a couple of my other F one people called Horsing Around with Horsepower. Very <laughs> intriguing name indeed. Yeah, and yeah, it's quite quite. I just love the the mood and ambience of this place because the questions is really something that makes me think because for some of the other questions I really had to take a moment just to really uh, build my answer because mm. no one has asked me neither have I really thought about it I see mm. well I mean at least... and of course you got a very very good host in the form of Derek <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> damn thanks man but yeah. honestly, congrats with your your growth, with your yeah, meme page you. growth, cause it's it's mm-hmm. it's not it's really not easy. I have tried, and dang, it's very very hard to actually stay yeah. consistent and actually still mm. be out there, especially yeah. when you have uh, competitors like F one memes. They, I mean, there's so many competitors. Too many this year. Too, yeah. I mean, only recently where it really started to explode this industry, and due to the point that it really became diluted. So for the newcomers, right, they are going to really struggle because all the people that have really been following other meme accounts, they're not going to follow a new account because uh, because for them, at least, this is my opinion, at least, is that I really follow so many. Why would I want extra one? Because that one extra one, what can he bring to the table? Probably just a repost of the first one who posted it, right? Most likely. Or just, I don't know, just take it from other people, I guess. So mm-hmm. that the value that the new people bring, not all the time, but some of the time, it's not going to really uh, positively contribute to what you have already. I see. 
Wow. Yeah. I think for my case, why my my um my pitch didn't actually succeed the way I wanted uh the the way I wanted it to actually uh go through was I think the the industry for sports was way too um diluted or what what do you call mm. it? Yeah, diluted. I can say diluted because yeah. a big I believe it's like a bigger fan base than probably Formula One. I would say. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Hmm. So, and so this is the thing I when I just deciding to do start my account because I could have gone either F1 or football but I know football is the most popular sport in the world you have at least yeah. a billion fans out there so many so yeah there's too many out there so focus on a smaller market it will be easier for you how old were you when you started or you know thought about starting something like this I was like 12 back then so 12. this time 18 wow. 12. Oh my God. 12 and you can I think like this Oh my god, I don't wow. know. I mean, wow. the thing is, I, start, I started F1 in 2011, so I already had five years of F1 experience, so I already <laughs> had the brains to know, know, the, know, the, know, the, know the audience, know the market. He's not playing. I, actually, if you ask Isaac, what uh, were, were I and uh, him doing back then? Just like, when what? I was 12, I was looking at YouTube videos <laughs> on how to build rockets, man. We were fooling around. Rockets like this. Oh my mm-hmm. god. Well, wow. then Ramsey, quick, 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 quick. We were, yeah, we actually, uh, we, yeah, we fool around during our our childhood times our, our, our back then. And, yeah, yeah we, I was so fooling around. We, were, we never had thoughts like what you have and, you know, starting a side hustle so quickly because. For myself, I recently started my side hustle of video editing just two years back, mm-hmm. and you have been start, uh, start started since two thousand sixteen. Wow, yep. that's incredible. Yeah, quite a long way now that I think of it. Wow, really a lot. But then the thing is, you will start a side hustle. So it's good to start, but however, you really need to get ready for to to brace for like say ups and downs because mm, yes. not all things will go your way. Sometimes. You will post something, it causes controversy. People will start shouting at you in the comment section and then just say, oh, this guy is stupid. He's so mind F. I wouldn't want to swear on, mm. swear on stream. But yeah, so... But then you go through all the experiences actually makes you stronger, mentally stronger. Yeah. And so, you know, like say, oh, this guy is the same person. Ah, don't care. Just go ahead. Next one. Mm. So how do you deal with criticism from, you know, your peers or, you know, just your classmates telling you that, ah, this thing, no future, no hope, man. Don't do, don't do. They never say anything, so never. I don't, wow. cannot, cannot say it. Never. Wow. Because some okay, of them, you have good because friends, a lot of them, they know, they know, they know interest in F1 or motorsport. So they wouldn't know what in the world I'm posting. So, mm. yeah lah. So, no really bother lah. I see. Mm. So, just a question. Have you ever came to Malaysia to watch a race like the Toyota Gasu race? No, because Never. the park's too far away from, from Singapore. Yeah, true. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really far. Unless you yeah. actually take a flight from. No, you take flight, you touch down immediately to Pang, like few km. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I took flight to Malaysia before, but I went Penang instead. I, uh. Probably one day Overshot, we can nah. meet Mika one day yeah. in Sepang mm. together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I meet Mika, but I don't meet Isaac. Ah, uh, this guy. <laughs> I want my L.O. Ashut. <laughs> oh, that? Yeah, come. L.O. Ashut. You take that out. Hmm. Ah, no, no, no. Uh, but first, I, I get a B.S. Ashut first. Ah. That one, I got your name on at the back. <laughs> yeah, I already lied to Mika. 11, I think it was like, for you, it's 11 or 12 sing dollars. Ah. Yeah, okay, what? Mm, for you, okay. Ah. I paid 35 yeah. for it. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh! There, there comes the exchange robbed. rate. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. I see. So, in your opinion, one is three oh. point one. What? Right, go on. Right. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Go ahead. So, what? What? What's your honest opinions on Mika? Like, do you think that he can make it up to, uh, probably, formula stages? I mean, for him, uh, he's currently doing. I've got. Of course, you can't deny that he's really doing a really well in sim racing. But to come into formulas at this age will be a bit difficult because you see, yeah, because he's really what nineteen, I believe. Nineteen, nineteen. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, it's a bit, bit too late because 
you see mm. the professional drivers, Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton, they started karting at age of four. Mm-hmm. And back then, there was no sim racing to help them develop. Mm-hmm. It was just all pure on-track stuff. So if you're coming in, say, at least when you say 13, say 15, 16, mm. Mm, you're not going to stand much chance. But in what one person exception to this rule, Roman Grosjean, because he started like, what, eight or nine? Maybe, or yeah, probably ten. Know. So, yeah. So, I mean, there can be exceptions, but once you start really this late, probably close copy racing possible, but to open wheels, um, it's a bit of a long shot. In the car, in fact, you can, but it's possible actually. Yeah, possible. Yeah. So, do you think that he's a better um racer than what's his name? Uh, Alex Young's son. <laughs> yes, by a country mouth, yes. I mean, look, <laughs> in the past five, six months, he's been winning every single thing possible, you know. Yeah, bro, he's, his win rate is like, what? 90 to 100%. At, at least 90%. He's, he's really, this guy's really on a roll. And you just compare, same period from what, say, 2021, he wasn't winning anything at all. Well, maybe one or two wins, but it wasn't very successful, but 2022, he just broke through. 2021, at the end, towards the end, he was winning quite a lot. Yeah, t- towards the end, 2021, but 2022 is really his breakthrough year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's really so good. I mean, you can't deny that he's better than Isaac every single way. No shit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <clears throat> like, the, the skills he has, considering, he, I think I heard from him, saying he only, like, start taking, like, action and everything when he was, like, 16 and that. So he started sim racing when he was 16. Ah. Well, not, not too long ago, actually. Yeah, not too long ago. And, what, it's and, only, and what, he's already years? achieved this much. Yeah, mm. exactly. So, Which is probably, kind of impressive, not gonna lie. Probably if you give him mm. another few more years, right, probably he can make it to indie cars, as we mentioned just now. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, if you can achieve this much, if you can progress, uh, gradually progress, uh, through sim racing and he has that fun funding to go up there yeah i think he has the potential mm. to do that i mean he's really won a lot he's really not won but he's really yeah he's won a lot of cash prizes so if he can really invest properly yeah i think he can really make the step up into real world racing last time In they fact, used to host like yeah. the land the land one right the e-racing gp or something like that yeah e-racing gp yeah it's like everyone at the one mall yeah everyone at the same at the same place racing together on of course a different different rigs itself lah. Mm. so uh I, I i i i'm following uh what's oh my god what's his name uh okay alex young's son is what's, what's his name alistair uh alistair so no i i, I actually went, scrolled through instagram just yesterday and i saw one of his posts inside a formula car so i was like oh this guy is actually in formula Asia or something. Hey, was it? Formula three. Eh? Formula Renault. Formula Renault. Formula Renault. So Black Arts Racing. Is he actually racing there or what? No, I don't think so. No, I think it's just testing the car. It's just a test car. Test. Yeah, it's like a test. He does test programs, I would say. But do you think that considering that he is uh Alex Young's son, do you think that he has the potential or or carry his that's name to actually make it to the top level? Mm, this can go either way. It can go two go ways. Either, way. either he's better than the better than that or worse than the dad. I give you two examples. Either Firstly, Max Verstappen have... or Mick, uh, Mick, Mick Schumacher. Yes, basically it's Verstappen and Schumacher. <laughs> Verstappen family, yours Verstappen the dad, Max Verstappen the son. Yours, he wasn't very successful. He was always like with the slower backmarker teams and Max when he came on the scene. He was really on the pace at the start. Yeah. Mm. From in just a year, in just a year plus, went from Toro Ross to the Red Bull. Lah. And once he went to Red Bull, first race in Red Bull already won. So we, a lot, uh, most of us already knew what to expect from this guy. And yeah, he's already shown the results through his driving. And Mick, on the other hand, it's literally the other end of the spectrum. Till now, he hasn't scored any points. And this year with Magnuson back in the team, he's really been. Uh, his there's no, uh, there's no other, other way to say it, carrying the team. I see. So I, I mean, he yeah. he's still young. He's he's in the Ferrari Academy, right? 
So yeah, I think I mean he... he's really graduated technically lah. True, but for he, I think he still has uh potential considering mm. with his family name. Yeah, like, who doesn't want a sh- Schumacher driver in their roster, right? But I mean, back then you said couple couple like ten years ago you had what Nelson PK Junior, mm-hmm. and then he wasn't a success story as well. Mm, true, mm. true, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's that. So yep. yeah, anything do you wanna add? I mean, we can yeah, carry on it. talking about football. <laughs> okay, we can probably well, go on to that. And Man, you know, in that case of football, yes, yeah, Isaac. Uh, uh, question. Like, I mean, if I'm gonna be honest, if Mick didn't have the Schumacher name, he would already, he would have already been questioned by now. Yeah, true. Also, he, even he, though he might really have, he, he might be, yep, cool. he might be facing the same situation like Lance Rowe, if he mm. doesn't have the name right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Even even Daniel, if he wasn't so like if he wasn't such a personality, right? Mm-hmm. People will have start questioning him by now. True. His and performance honestly, yeah, not that good really, uh, recently. Yeah. I really pity uh what's his name? M- Mesabin. Yeah. <laughs> Russian driver. Yeah. He hasn't done anything wrong actually. Yeah. Think about because it. he's Russian. <laughs> yeah, it's the, well, he's the nationality is the one that caused everything to, to just break down for him. There was one who did the German hand sign as well. Oh, oh that, the that Nazi sign. I'm not going to do it on that, stream. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that on stream. <laughs> what, was that? what was the guy's name? It's some... But he, um, I don't he's know. actually a good driver. Good car yeah, car. he's a good driver. But then because of the Russian sanctions, he had a race under an Italian license. Yeah. True. And then he did yeah. that and got everything revoked and don't know where he is now. If he didn't laugh, right? He could have. Like, uh, said he, he he only just a green laugh. He had a green. He, he laughed it off. If he didn't laugh, right, he could have said he was just waving or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Dang. Yeah, but oh well. And hey, just back to the Schumacher thing, right? I just want to say that I know he has a Schumacher name. He's carrying the family tradition, but he really has to step up this year because he's getting a teammate that's way more experienced than him, and he's really scoring points right at the start. And both of them have equ- probably at most very similar, if not equivalent cars. So, hmm. yeah, and Magnuson, he's really doing really, really well this year, uh, even though he was out of F1 for at least like a year, I believe. Hmm. So, and then the dark Haas car is new to him, new regulations. It's a new style of driving. You really have to adapt how, even change how you drive at times. So, yeah, he really has really needs to work himself up this year to start scoring points. I saw a meme where it said like uh kick uh uh kick Magnuson out, uh get uh make it uh, no get uh Mazepin in, develop the car with Mazepin's money, kick Mazepin <laughs> out and get and get uh him back. Use the money to develop the car. Wow. Yeah. I mean it is actually a good idea though but it's, and it's, it's the half so... master half master blend. Yeah, they saw it coming. Or probably you could say that Haas requested Mazepin to start the war. So then they... Yeah. But then they didn't tell Mazepin about this plan and, you know... <laughs> uh, Conspiracy theories, huh? Conspiracy theories, yes. So, knowing that they... Scratch they, 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 What? Scratch yeah, your nose. The, no, I have to get the Gunther Steiner. Ah. You just know... Big punch off. Do, do, do. <laughs> Right, so back to what I'm going to say. Um, knowing that there there is a Chinese uh first Chinese driver in the F one, uh currently, do you think that Wan he will Yi go? Ch- yeah, do you think that he will go through the same thing? What Mesopin will go? Uh, you do you think that he will follow Mesopin's footstep? You know, get criticism and you know racism, things like that. I don't think so, actually, because. So, it's actually performing quite decently well. I mean, of course, he's against Bottas, which is a very incredible driver. Let's, yeah. let's, not, let's, not, say, let's not deny that. But this year, so he has actually been pretty consistent, consistent and really de- de- performing decently well. And from rumors I've heard so far, he's actually getting another year on his contract. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. I mean, yeah, I mean, because last year he finished third in the Formula 2 Championship last year. So, I mean, he does have some pedigree of good racing and this year, he's really showing for himself. Mm. Mm. I see. 
Yeah. So I think yeah. we should move on to football and ditch Isaac. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isaac. Uh, why is uh, Isaac here even in the first place? What is why? football, guys? Who's Isaac? A uh, football. Wait, football guys, is wait, you take the ball. Who's Isaac? Yeah. And then you kick. Who's that? Wait. Kick and then Isaac, you score. Isaac, Isaac. 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 Isa
Yeah. What what will interest them, right? They could actually there's yeah. so many alternatives out there, there's so many good clubs out there than just one club. Mm. So especially if where if you're playing at that uh professional level. Yeah. Yeah, I mean but at least now we already starting to get somewhere because soon I think we're gonna sign a left back Malaysia from uh Fire North. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, left back department is really quite tight because you have Victor exactly. and Alex Dallas. Both very good players. <laughs> yeah, both that, about, that's, e- that's both about thing, equal uh, level as well. I, I, that's, that's the thing. I don't get why Eric Ten Hag is still targeting fullbacks and not centre backs and the midfield. Yeah, that's. I mean, unless I Malaysia can play as centre back as well, but I've seen quite a bit of footage and he's mainly left back. So that is what concerns me, uh. mm. because if you're gonna lack centre centre backs, you only have what Veran, Lindelof, and Maguire. That's about it. Yeah, Varane has not shown his full potential. I mean, his yet. injuries is yeah. just granted he has too many injuries. Uh. Well, I hopefully all goes well for MU this transfer window, honestly. Because yeah. we really <laughs> need to to get something off the t- tight budget, I believe. Is it like 120 million? 100 million only, apparently. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. Else. Pounds or euros, I'm not sure. Shut I think it's pounds. Sec, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> Yeah. I say I still. What is the what is offside? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay, Ken. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, I think somewhere along those lines. Mm. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of kind of tough considering you know I've heard rumors that MU wants to get in at least ten players during an uh ten hawks transformation, and with that t- amount of budget, who can you get? Right? Yeah, it's like very difficult. Like, what ten million per player? Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean for te- ten million defender is possible, but yeah, but for a striker, considering ten million, you're talking our... about what? I don't know, JDT. <laughs> <laughs> JDT. <laughs> I mean, it's possible though. I mean, yeah, Jota has been, be, they they have been doing quite well this season. Yeah, I mean they're like they're like what eight time champions consecutive. Yeah. But you know they 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 are one of the richest clubs in in Malaysia. That's true, lah. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, they have the Sultan's money. Wait a minute. How is that? How do you know about this football? I did, I thought. Yes. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Then since you know about J, since you know about JDT, tell me who's the manager at JDT. Okay, actually, uh, I don't know. I, I, that one I don't know. Oh yeah, that one I know lah. What's his name? Mika Hakimi. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> oh, I didn't know Mika Hakimi is doing football as well. Actually, yeah, he he played football last time. Oh, oh. Last time, yeah, and he made it to. Oh yeah. Oh, did he make it to Manchester City? Oh come Reserves. on! Reserves. <laughs> the thing is, actually, uh, on my own private, on my own personal Instagram account, I love taking a piece of Manchester City fans and. My friends, because a couple of my friends are actually Messi defense, mm-hmm. two of them actually, and both of them also, and one of them actually likes F one. So, yeah, mm. uh, I think it piece on them as well. <laughs> By just telling them, oh, you bought out the Champions League again. <laughs> yeah, actually, even, even Arsenal is disappointing. Even what? Yeah, but one actually, what what was the funniest moment in in like probably last season in the Premier League was. Arsenal flopping to get into the Champions League. <laughs> like, yeah. they were so good. They were so good. Like, they were winning all few games. Like, I, I would say three games. And they were yep. they're supposed to win the next two. And they actually mm. lost to, like, Brighton and probably Watford or something. And yeah, very disappointing. So. Yes. Yeah. Well, disappointing is an is a understatement for Manchester United fans. But... <laughs> But thank yeah, God, well. thank God, West Ham actually lost their final game. Yeah. Or not United, no European League at all. That Conference would be League. worse. That'd be worse. Yeah, exactly. Conference League, oh yeah. my God. I, oh my he, God, that, he, I wouldn't <laughs> mention that. <laughs> I don't think yeah. if we, I think if we, like, we drop one level down to Conference League, I don't think we can even get De Jong back. I mean, De Jong, yeah. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, he wouldn't like a Conference League. And the thing is, I remember the final day of Chip, not for Champions League. Final day as a Premier League. I wasn't watching the menu match. I was watching the the, the Man City and uh Liverpool matches. I mean, I was like on my I was like on my monitor. I was like half the screen is the first match. The other half of the second matches. Second mm. match. I was like, 
I'm honest, like, and then when Aston Villa was 2-0, I was like, oh my god, Liverpool's gonna win this. Actually, that For game me, is, in football, is interesting. I just, I just never want, I just never want City to win because I hate them so much. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, considering you're I said, you a MU, <laughs> MU fan, then, <laughs> yeah, we all hate City. But yeah. that's, that's the way it is. Yeah. But, recently, when I watch MU play, this, this is this, this not really it's it's not really like a big deal every game in like every game in and out it's just the same the playing style same. and things like that yeah not no difference I mean, yeah it's not easy to decipher where it went wrong but we all know if she just went wrong somewhere it was catastrophically bad yeah that's where we went wrong so yeah back to our guest GP yeah yep so how th- so you know, knowing uh the F one calendar is stacked with races in Europe and yeah. the ME Middle East. So how do you yep. cope with the time zones when uh, you have to update <laughs> your your account? I got no idea, man. I just accommodate myself to the race time, mm. Uh, because let's say for example, race USA, the race starts at three a.m. What I normally do is just like go to sleep at ten, wake up at two thirty. Oh, I mean, if you are a true F one fan. Dedication. Yeah. I mean, same for Mika Hakimi. Dedicated to same racing. He even races in the midnight. Yeah. Oh, wow. I think he drove like, what? The 24 hours? No. There was, ah, during like, uh, ah, my, SW, is... my SWS, right? He had a race in the, mo- like, at the morning. I think he ended the race at like 8 and immediately he drove to Morak and he watched me race. And I didn't even do that well. So I was like, shit. You, <laughs> you ungrateful friend. I got like, for my batch, I think I got like, 7th for Quali. And then after that, uh, I spun out on the final lap. Oh, okay, Ken. Okay, Ken. Okay, okay Ken. Ken. Yeah, no one asked. <laughs> <laughs> wow, why, why, why did I have to be like that? <laughs> it's Isaac. <laughs> it's I met him, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, back to the question. So... I'll, so you actually time your sleeping time lah. Yeah. So do you find it difficult to actually, you know, uh control your fix your sleeping pattern after that? Okay, because I don't know why, it's just I force myself to wake up at the, when I my alarm clock rings ah. Mm. Just somehow works. I don't know how. But anyway, because at least on my Mondays, my school is only nine nine to twelve, so not so bad. Mm. Mm. Twelve, nine to twelve only. Yeah, for Mondays. Oh, are you in college? College, or? Uh? Poly. What? Um, some Nian Polytechnic or something like that. No, it? Singapore Polytechnic. What's with the Poly? What, what What does Poly do? Yeah, what's Poly? Um, it's a bit like it's a bit like uh pre U. Oh. Hmm. I think what I don't know what's Malaysian equivalent lah, but yeah, pre university. I see. Hmm. So, yep. yeah, I, I would say I think we should wrap up. So, I think last question. Yeah. So, how how do you, like, um, have you ever woke up um, during at night? Like, obviously, like, as you mentioned, you you sleep at, let's say, the American uh, Grand Prix. So, mm. you, you normally sleep at 10 and the races normally happen at 3 a.m. So, you normally wake yep. up at 2.30 to get all set up and things like that. So, yeah. Have you ever feel in the middle of the race so drained out that you know what I just I'm just gonna go back to bed or something? Uh, that and it actually happened once or twice. Uh, <laughs> yeah. in fact, the thing is, twenty seventeen Mexico Grand Prix, which is the one that Lewis wrapped up the championship, right? Mm-hmm. I slept through the race. Oh, <laughs> oh, so I missed the whole race. Oh wow! So, <laughs> um, dang. yeah, Did, which went wow. really well. Did, do you have some? Do, like, what was your feeling? Like, some sort of regret or something? Yeah, got that. Uh, Absolutely got that. I mean, things happen, things like that happen. Yeah. So, yeah, don't beat yourself mm. up so badly. Yeah, I mean, at least it's still, I mean, at least I know I'm still doing better than Isaac. <laughs> uh, this guy is personally attacking Oh, yeah, one more thing. How, what do you think about Isaac? Like, how, how, how do you think he's racing and... Best team driver ever. Do you think Already that he who? can make it to the, to the level that Mika is? Ah, huh? I don't understand your question. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> wow. Dang. Right, and I then think... I think <laughs> with more training, <laughs> with more training day and night, Yeah, can can can. Just focus yeah. in school, lah. Just you know, cause mm. this guy, uh, in school, cause I'm his class, I'm his classmate. Uh, my honest opinion. Hey, don't don't be classmate, lah. You ask him. Don't just don't sit with him, ah. <laughs> no, I I'm not sitting with him. I'm just like all the way okay, at the can. back, I'm at the front. So ah, good. <laughs> see, I I'm the good kid here. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So honestly, he should prioritize like. More on school for the time being than sim racing lah. Just for just yeah. in my opinion, in my opinion, okay. Mm. Don't take it personal, Isaac. Like. Your opinion does not matter. <laughs> oh, matter, wow. matter to you, matter. Oh. Uh, three, 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 three. Alright, so than yeah, Daniel honestly, Ricciardo. this has been one of the greatest episodes I had ever since I stopped. <laughs> the most chaotic oh, one, wow. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, in, like like in the middle of the podcast, watching Isaac playing F one, <laughs> that 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 that's funny. So yeah. yeah, funny thing is I had I I didn't have any background music through my headphones this episode. That's that shows yeah. how uh interested I am in this episode. Because the other few episodes, Ooh. I yeah, in the few the other few episodes that I have, I've always have background music through uh at the back of my headphones. So. How would mm. you? How would you? How How do you think they would feel when they heard when those other interviewees heard that? Uh, Mika. Um, no, no, no. Uh, this one I will just edit it out. Edit this it one out. cut. This one cut. 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 Hey, Derek, cut. 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 All right, so I think that's it. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining, man. Yeah, you. no problem, man. Uh, it's really like, great to talk. Thanks so much, okay, man. Yeah, so I'll uh, catch you guys in a bit. Peace. Yeah, but like Lago, Lago, got dope like Pablo. Pablo got dope like Pablo. Got dope, chat three with the Draco. Draco on the north got Diego. Diego, I still a wiggle. Movie and rapping Kilo.